Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for watching. This is our monthly prayer request for the month of August. All right. The reason we do these prayer requests, brothers and sisters in Christ, just always a reminder, is because prayer is a key essential to a Bible-believing, God-fearing man's life, a saved sinner's life. Someone who's washed under the blood, someone who's part of the church of God. We can go through all the different descriptions of someone who's saved and born again. Born again. Okay, here's another one. All right. Don't let anybody lie to you. When they say prayer is not part of leading to salvation, God saving you by His grace, saving me by His grace, don't let them lie to you, okay? Prayer starts before God saves you, but it starts at salvation when God's in the process of saving you. Okay, what I mean by process is you've got to go through the steps. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. You have to come to God broken. Remember what the Bible says, not my notes, but about the rock. Jesus is the rock. There's no foundation that any man can lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Which is Christ. Jesus Christ. Right? And it talks about that rock, that whoever falls on this rock shall be broken. But whomsoever this rock shall fall on, and shall grind him to powder. Right? we got to come to him in a repentant state, broken, having uh, sorrow for our personal sins that we've sinned against God, our Creator, Almighty God who's righteous and just. We believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. We confess both in prayer. See, that's where your prayer life starts. You confess both in prayer, and then you ask God to save you. When I say he's in the process of saving, I'm not saying that you have to do good works to be saved. I'm saying you've got to follow the steps that the Bible says to follow. The world as a whole today hates those steps. Satan doesn't want to see people get saved. So what he does is he gives them what he want, what they want, easy believism. Oh, there's no repentance. Oh, let's change the definition of repentance. Repentance is just going from unbelief to belief. And so on and so forth. And then when the Bible says you can believe in vain, eh, the Bible does let's just ignore this. This isn't the foundation. This man right here is. I'm talking about man. You can be as God's known good and evil. Mankind of the world think that they're the final authority, and they've been taught that. All these false religions, even the ones that claim to be Christians, they're all false religions. They've been taught that they're the final authority. This isn't the final authority. This says you can believe in vain. What does that mean? If you skip steps, you skip repentance. You skip prayer, confessing both in prayer and asking God to save you. You skip those things. I just had belief. I just, I just believe. Well, your belief is in vain according to the scriptures. You're still going to hell. All right. Stay away from the faith alone. Stay away from people that say you have to continue doing good works or you're going to lose your salvation. That's a whole other study. It's not for this study. I didn't mean to go off too much on that. But the point is, is prayer starts at salvation. When God saves you, you call out to him in prayer on your knees, humbling yourself. Lord, save me. Lord, I am a dirty, rotten, filthy, low down, no good sinner on my way to hell, and I deserve to go to hell for sinning against you, Lord, an almighty, righteous God who created me and who's going to judge me one day. And what's that judgment? Hell. I'm on my way to hell, and I deserve to go to hell. Lord, I don't want to go to hell. What do I do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. I believe that Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. It's God's blood that was shed on the cross, that Jesus is the capital S Son of God, which means God manifest in the flesh. It was God's blood that was shed on the cross, and that blood was shed because of my sins. How he died, how he died for our sins, that's what 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, or 2 through 4, I'm sorry, 3 and 4, how he died for our sins. They like to take that part out, brothers and Christ. Our sins. They like to take that out. How he died and, uh, and rose again. How he died according to the scriptures and how he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. They like to leave that part out. Why? Because then they can leave repentance out. That's repentance. How he died for our sins. you got to believe that. And the Bible says, with the, with, the, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness... But with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. This is in Romans. It's, Romans is for today. Don't let anybody lie to you and say, Romans isn't for today. Yes, it is. You have people that are Satanists, just complete Satanists, that are trying to take everything away that leads people to salvation. 
that leads people to Jesus, the real Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. It says, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, not salvation, righteousness. But with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's when you confess that repentance and that belief and the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross in prayer. And then you ask God to save you. Call upon the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. You confess both in prayer and you ask God to save you. That's what leads to salvation. God looks at the heart. It's always about the heart, not the head. Now, that being said, when I read these verses that we're going to read when it comes to prayer that I like to read every time we do prayer requests, it's because, brother says Christ, I want them down here, not just up here. Memorizing scripture is okay. It's good. But you need to be putting them down here also, not just up here. That's memorization. Having them down here means you're living them. Are you praying every day? 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. I, mean, I have a hard time with address. As long as you've got God's Word memorized, it's okay to be a little bit off on the addresses, but I'm working on it so I can link the addresses to the Scripture. Okay. I know a man, uh, we're going to do another video, but I know a brother in Christ that he, if you could ask him a question, he could turn to the Scriptures and show you an answer almost on everything. But he's been in ministry for 50 years. He took God's Word and hid it in his heart. Preached on it for 50 years. Okay. But he was great at it, and I'm trying to get good at it. But I think the best part that helps any brother and sister in Christ out there be good about quoting Scripture is having a heartfelt love for His Word and heartfelt love where you take God's Word in and you're trying to live it. This says pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Brother and sister Christ, we're to pray without ceasing. It's not enough to have that memorized. I've got it memorized. Are you living it? Yes or no? Okay. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Let your request be made known unto God. Do you know why it says request? I don't want to get into a huge Bible study, but why does it say request? Because the Bible talks about how God knows what we have need of before we ask it. God takes care of the lilies of the field. Will he not take care of you? When it comes to our need, Paul tells Timothy, a man in ministry, it's predominantly doctrinally addressed to a man in ministry. When you get into ministry, you've got to be content with food and raiment. Be careful with men that aren't content with food and raiment. I just said be careful. I didn't say they were percent wrong and evil. A lot of them are. They, go, they fall into the filthy lucre. They fall into the love of money. They fall into that trap. Even if it's not like wanting to be a millionaire, but they fall into the trap where ministry becomes a, um, a business. It's a way to make money. I have to make money. I got to provide for my own. I got to pay the rent. It's for paying the bills. And it's no longer a life calling that I'm doing this for the Lord and doing this to be a servant to the brethren. Okay. But God will take care of our needs. We still ask Him. We thank Him. Remember, uh, thank God. We're going to get to that verse. Thank God without ceasing. Give God glory in all things. Whether in word or in deed, do all to the glory of God. You give God the glory in everything. You give God thanks and everything. We thank Him for food and raiment. But there's nothing wrong with saying, Lord, I'd like to have a wood stove. I'm going to get into that in this prayer request. Lord, there's, I'd like to have a chicken coop. Lord, I'd like to have a uh, garden. I'd like to have some of these things, Lord. Could you help me out? Is it okay if I have some of these things? All right. there's not, uh, I'm, I'm a little sick today, Lord. Could you help me get over it quicker? Lord, there's nothing wrong with making requests be made known unto God. That's what we're supposed to do. The first person you should turn to when you truly get saved is Jesus Christ. Notice I said person. It's a whole other study. But the per Godhead, I'll say it real quick. The Godhead, the Bible teaches that the Godhead is God the Father, which is the soul, and the person of Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible talks about. So that's the whole thing about saying that, but... You should always, your first thought should be to say, Lord, help me. Lord, what about this? Lord, what about that? The Lord shouldn't be the last person you go to to talk to, brothers and sisters in Christ. He should be the first person you go to talk to. There's a lot of people that like to gossip. There's a lot of people that like to talk amongst people. They'll talk to strangers. They'll talk to people online. And I have neighbors that are gossips. They, they love to talk to people. But the, what's supposed to separate us from them is when something goes wrong, the first person we go to is Jesus Christ. It started at salvation. 
when we saw there was something wrong, something wrong with this right here, what did I do? I had to go to Jesus Christ. He's the solution to all our problems, brothers and sisters of Christ. He's the solution. Are you going to the Lord first? James 1 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given them. Him. Sorry, it shall be given him. Let me ask you this, brothers and sisters Christ. When you come across a question about the Bible or about this, is the first person you go to Jesus Christ? Do you go and pray to God? Is that your first person you go to? Or do you run again run to that respecter of persons that you have and you try to hit him up with the question first? Do you try to read the Bible? Do you try to do your own little Bible study? Try to say, Lord, I got this question. I need an answer. Lord, or I want an answer. God's the one who decides whether you need it or not. But I want an answer, Lord, my request. But here it's talking about wisdom. Lord, can you open the scriptures to me? I don't get this. I don't get that. This kind of looks like it contradicts, but I know your Bible doesn't contradict. It's the perfect written word of God, the King James Bible. And I can't really reconcile this part of here with this part over here. Lord, can you help me? Do you go to Jesus Christ first, or do you always run to those people behind the camera first? The men in ministry. I know some of you might still be going to the Babel buildings. <sighs> Pray you get out of them eventually someday. But let's say you're still going to the Babel buildings. Do you run to that man behind the pulpit and try to get his answer first? Do you go to him for the knowledge first? The Bible says here that if any of you lack wisdom, any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Not the man behind the pulpit. Not the man behind the camera. Are you asking God? There's nothing wrong with coming to me, because the next video we're going to do is talking about question and answer video again. There's nothing wrong with going to a brother in Christ and saying, hey, I've been looking into it. I've asked God. I've prayed. I've been looking into it. And you can ask a brother in Christ. You can ask a preacher, a pastor, a teacher, and say, hey, I've been looking into this. I've prayed about it. Has God showed you anything that you can, that you can show me? There's nothing wrong with that. But what I'm talking about, brothers and sisters, is the first person you go to, who is it? You need to check yourself. I need to check myself. Who's the first person you go to? Man? <laughs> the world? I, I, are you going to God? Mm -hmm. Prayer. It's very important in a, in, a, in, a, in a brethren's life. I don't know if you can hear that, but some animals are going a little crazy. Next one says, John 17, 15 says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou, that, that thou should keep them from evil. Okay. One of the things we pray, brothers and sisters of Christ, is we pray for other brothers and sisters in Christ, that God keeps them separate from this world. That God keeps them, sorry, started bouncing a little bit, forgive me. That God keeps them from trying to resurrect the old man. God protects them from going to the world. I know brethren that I love, I still pray for them, and they've gone back to video games. Hollywood movies, TV shows, and video games. There are some brethren that are starting to fall back into the world in covetousness. They have a lot of covetousness, the lowercase g God of the life that they want to live. And there's, uh, when I say, I'm just generalizing, because you can spe specific, like for me, I, that garden can become a lowercase g God. If I covet that garden, and I'm not, this isn't coming first, and this isn't my foundation. Okay. The house, the chickens, Victoria, my miniature schnauzer, my truck, the ocean. I, I live here on the ocean side, the fog. It's a uh, cloudy day today. Uh, we're going to hit a, a recording that I videoed yesterday, which it was sunny and beautiful yesterday. Kind of clear, you could see pretty good. But today, this morning, it's a little bit cloudy. But I live by the ocean. I could covet that to the point that if God said, hey, I want you to move and I want you to live this other way because I need you to live in this other area. You know how you, in different areas you live different ways. Used to be hardcore. Um, don't want to go off on too much of a rabbit trail, but grocery stores didn't give you every type of food from every type of area. Okay, When you moved to an area, you had to eat the food that was readily available in that area. So you had to change a little bit on how you eat the clothes that you could get. You couldn't get every clothes like you can today. But the whole point is, is I don't want you, uh, it's not that living by the coast is evil and sinful and wrong, but God could look at me and go, that's not what I have for you. I want you to be part of a house church over here in this state that's a desert. I told the Lord, I said, trees. I love trees. I couldn't fathom not being around trees. But if God said, hey, 
that's what I need you to do, the question comes down, am I coveting this so much that I'm going to refuse to obey the Lord and go help out that house church that lives in, in a desert area? Covetousness. Brethren are falling away. We're in the falling away. Brethren have always been falling away. Back to Paul's time. He talks about it in 1st 2nd Corinthians. He talks about it in Galatians. Brethren getting deceived by the world and the way of the world, and they get pulled away. Okay. But the Bible talks about before Jesus comes back, looking for that blessed hope, before Jesus comes back, there's going to be a lot of brethren that are going to start falling back into worldliness. They're going to start trying to resurrect the old man that's supposed to be dead and buried with Jesus Christ. And when you truly get saved and born again, brothers and Christ, there is no resurrecting the old man. You're going to be miserable. Okay. It's not going to be fun as it was before you got saved. Oh, this stuff was fun. It's, it makes you miserable. Okay, and then once God knocks you to your knees and picks you back up and gets you out of that bad stuff again, you look at yourself like you're an idiot. Why did I fall back? It was so stupid of me. Okay. You can't go back. It'll never be the same once you truly get saved and born again. You can try and mess up your life. You can try and lose rewards in heaven. Uh, you can lose a lot of things, but I don't want to go too much. But the point is, is we're supposed to be praying for brethren that they don't fall back into their old ways. We're supposed to be praying for brethren that they stick to this as their foundation. And I'll say this out loud. People always hit me up. I thought you said you were done with Brother Brian. I still pray for him. That he gets back to this being his final authority. This being his foundation. That his priority is the ministry comes first, which means serving the brethren comes first. Not his lowercase g gods, the covetousness of him wanting to live the way he wants to live, the life that he wants. He wants what he wants, not what God wants, what he wants. And I've failed that too in my life. I've got to go through my life, and I pray that for everybody. Myself first, the brethren second. Okay? That I'm not being covetous, that I'm putting God first. We're supposed to be praying for one another, brothers and sisters of Christ. Make sure we're praying for one another. I still pray for Brother Brian. I don't hate him. I don't have, uh, what do you call it, bitterness towards him, hate towards him. I love my brother in Christ. But at this point, there's nothing. And I say, but with that love and with that prayer that I pray, at this point, there's nothing I can do for him except pray for him. That's all I can do. All right. But the point is that he's an example. I pray for him every day. I don't just kick him to the curb. He's nothing. He's lost. He's a heretic. He's a Satanist. And he was never saved to begin with. That's, that's, that's a joke. That's, that's what a, some brethren are doing, taking the, what they call the easy road. Instead of treating him like a brother in Christ, like the Bible says we're supposed to, they just come up with this idea in their head that we'll just treat him like they're lost. Therefore, if we treat him like they're lost, I don't have to obey the Bible. I can do things, just kick him to the curb and throw him out there. No, 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 no. He's still a brother in Christ. He just, I think the biggest thing that hurt him was that he turned his back on looking for that blessed hope. It didn't say believing in that blessed hope. Looking. It's an action. It's how you live your life. Now, people have heard it said that in teachings that it's called the, um, the it's the false teaching, he teaches it's the false teaching of the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Well, the whole thing about the imminent return of Jesus Christ is the Bible doesn't use that term. What the Bible says is, looking present tense for that blessed hope every day you're looking for jesus to come back are you ready how's your life when you don't know when he's coming back and he can come back any day it's a motivator to make sure that you're living for jesus christ and you don't become one of those men that fall to the left or fall to the right you stay focused on jesus christ your eyes are on jesus christ but when you teach that there is no imminent return that Jesus isn't coming back in today or tomorrow. He's not coming back for another seven years. You take your eyes off Jesus Christ and you're no longer looking for that blessed hope. Brian took his eyes off of it. Uh, January, this past January, go back another year, so it's about a year and a half, that he's he came out with that study saying there's no imminent return of Jesus Christ. He turned his back on what the Bible commanded him to do, which was looking, present tense, for that blessed hope. And we're going to get into that study. Okay, that's the danger right now today, brothers and sisters. That's what we desperately need prayer for the brethren, is that they don't take their eyes off Jesus Christ. That they're looking, it's an action, with your life that you're living, that you're looking for Jesus' coming. 
That blessed hope is talking about when Jesus comes back to catch away the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. We're supposed to be looking for that. We're not supposed to be looking for the mark of the beast system. We're not supposed to be looking for the, uh, the beast himself. We're not supposed to be looking for the one world order. What are we supposed to be looking for? We're supposed to be looking for Jesus Christ to come back and take us home. We need to get back into this. And we need to get back to hiding it here. And we need to get back to living it. And one of the things is, is preaching the gospel. We need to get back to preaching the gospel. We need to get back to laying out gospel tracts. We desperately need to be praying for the brethren. That we stay on that straight and narrow path. I still pray for Brother Brian. I pray someday that God will open up his eyes. And he'll get back to, okay, I was wrong. He'll go back to making amends with the brethren that he's hurt and stabbed in the back. And that his priorities go back to God comes first, the ministry comes first. He says that a lot, but this isn't a kicking him video, but this is an example. I still pray for the brother. I love my brother in Christ, Brother Brian. I still pray for him. You said you're done with them. No, I still pray for him. There's times where I still have to do teachings that they're going to contradict what he's teaching because when you take your eyes off Jesus Christ, which happened a year and a half ago, his teachings just gotten and just slowly just messed up where it's like, that ain't right. You're, you're, you're using scriptures and taking them out of context. You're, and I would make the same mistake if I took my eyes off Jesus Christ. I'd make the same mistake if I started falling back into my old self, the old man. I'd start making mistakes left and right. If I start getting into covetousness, which I have sometimes, covetousness, which is idolatry, start putting other things first before God and His Word, before being a servant to the brethren. The ministry starts suffering when I do that. But the point is, is we're not we're supposed to pray for one another to keep them from evil. Okay. Not just pr another thing, part of this is it's not just that they don't fall back into the world covetous, which is idolatry, that they don't turn their back on major doctrine and looking for that blessed hope is major doctrine. Okay, don't let anybody tell you any differently. It is major doctrine. When you have someone that says there is no imminent return of Jesus Christ, they've turned their back on looking, present tense, for that blessed hope. They've turned their back on They're not looking for the blessed hope. And it shows in the life they're living and what they're afraid of, the world. Right? Which gets to the next part of this where you're praying that they keep them from evil. We're to pray that, that we keep the world off the brethren, brothers of Christ. Got a car going by. We're to pray that the world stays off, and we need that prayer today, the other prayer request. Keep this wicked world off the backs of the brethren. Let us continue to live a life of Christ and to serve God in the ministry. Remember, we're all part of the ministry in some way or form, whether it's preaching the gospel, okay? Studying the word that when you have someone come by, you're ready to give an answer. Remember what it says, ready. We'll be talking about this in another study, but ready to give an answer. Don't be quick. I have to have an answer right there and on the spot. But you're supposed to be ready. You're always supposed to be studying this so if somebody comes along, you're ready to give an answer. Saved or lost. Okay, lost to the lost, your answer should always try to lead them to Jesus Christ and the true plan of salvation. You know, to get them saved. And with the saved, it's to help them stay on that path that, they, that they're on. They're supposed to on the straight and narrow. Okay. But to pray that the world, we keep the world off our backs. Okay. Romans 1.9 says, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always of my prayers. Here's another thing to check yourself with, brothers and sisters. How often do you pray for the brethren? Let's say, brother, you have a problem with me. How often do you pray with, for me? Amen. My biggest thing is if you got a problem with me, how many of you, brother, sister Christ, have actually come and tried to talk to me? I have an email that's out there. I've talked to people on uh, Skype. How many of you have tried to pray about me first? You always go to God first. And then come talk to me. How many of you have a problem with Brother Brian and have just wrote him off? How many of you are actually praying for him? I can't go to him, he's cut off fellowship with me. But if he hasn't cut off fellowship with you, how many of you are praying for him, and how many of you go to him afterwards and talk to him? Okay. How often are you praying for the brethren? It should be, if Paul says, especially when you read Corinthians, he's going around 
he leads people to Christ. Everything seems great. You're on a spiritual high. Everything seems to be wonderful. People are getting saved and, and they're turning their lives around. It's great. And he leaves and he comes back to find them what? Back to their old ways. Everything's back to the way it was before they got saved. Easy believism. Back to the way it was before they got saved. There is no change. And Paul just, I don't believe, I don't believe you're all saved. Paul says, if a man be called a brother, yeah, if a man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He goes and leads uh, the, the Galatians to Christ. The Corinthians is about sin, going back to their old ways just like that. A good example of someone who's a false convert is someone whose attitude is, is ah, sin isn't that big of a deal. Someone who truly gets saved and born again understands that heartfelt conviction of the cost of sin and where sin was sending them. And what Jesus actually went through on the cross, it's down here, not up here, down here. Sin is a big deal to someone who's truly saved and born again. But this world, this fake Christianity that's out there, this fake, uh, all these fake religions, their attitude towards sin is not what it should be. When you're praying, are you praying, uh, going back to Paul, he goes there and he's like, he sees that Wow, this isn't going to be as easy as I thought it was. I preach the truth to them. They get saved. Praise the Lord. Some are false converts, but some get saved. Praise the Lord. And look what happens. They're falling apart just like that. It's so easy for them to fall apart. Lord, watch over them. He's praying hardcore for them. The Galatians, someone comes in and tells them that they have to keep the law, uh, the laws of Moses, which includes circumcision. you got to get circumcised and keep the laws of Moses. The uh, holy days, the Sabbath days, the new moon, uh, the touch not, taste not, eat not. Read that in the Old Testament, Levitical laws. You have to keep the Levitical laws in order to be saved. Along with that belief that Paul told you about. Oh, it's, that's there, but, but you got to do this too. you got to go to a, a good local ba a Bible building. I mean, church. you got to wear your Sunday best. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe that when you leave the house to go into town, anytime I leave the house to go into town, I've got one pair of jeans that are look brand new. <laughs> I've got two or three that have holes in the knees that look kind of bad, stains from working around here, but I keep one good pair of jeans in there. Don't get me wrong, my grandfather always taught me that, and this is just, it's not a sin per se, but I'm just saying I want you to know what I believe and how I live my life. When I go to li go into town to be in front of other people, my grandfather always taught me to look presentable. You don't have to wear a suit and tie. You don't have to dress like you're a lawyer or a banker, like you're going to deceive and lie to people. But you try to dress decent when you leave the house. If you, my grandfather, I remember him working in the, in the um, garage, and he had his um, the jumpsuit on, and he's working, and he's got grease on his face, he's got grease on his hands, and he's working on the on his vehicle, and all of a sudden it came down, he found the part that went bad. And he's like, I need this new part. So what do we do? Just jump in the truck? No, what he did was is he went in, changed his clothes, took a shower, put on nice clean clothes that aren't stained, aren't dirty, aren't falling apart. And he drove into town for five minutes to grab that one part, came back, and then he threw that jumpsuit back on and went back out to the garage and, and finished cleaning. I'm like, all that for five minutes into town? He's like, he always taught me look presentable. So please, I just wanted to throw that in there. Try to look presentable. But, brother, sister of Christ, be careful. Okay? Just be careful. Pray for the brethren that they're not getting sucked up. Galatians, they're trying to say, well, you have, Galatians, you have to live, you have to do these works in order to be saved. I teach what the Bible teaches. After salvation, you're ordained unto good works that have before been ordained that ye should walk in them. Um, Ephesians 2, you have 8 and 9, everyone loves 8 and 9, but 10 says that unto good works with, which before hath been ordained, that ye should walk in them. The Bible teaches when you truly get saved, good works will follow. Okay, you're, the only time you see bad works is what we just talked about, praying for the brethren. When they start trying to resurrect the old man, when they start falling back into the world. Okay, the bad works come because... You've lost your focus. You've taken your eyes off of Jesus Christ, that blessed hope. But these verses, it's not enough to get them memorized. We need to hide them in our hearts. That's why I keep reading them every time we do these studies. 
or dust studies every time we do the prayer request. And I didn't mean for this one to go so long, but just in a preaching mood, and I've been so busy with doing stuff around the house. And we'll talk about some of that that I've been doing. Romans 10 1 says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer for God for Israel is that they might be saved. Another thing is, is Brothers of Christ, when's the last time you prayed for Israel? It's in the Bible. How many, there's times where God puts it on my heart. I go online, there's a couple of uh, live videos for the pr their prayer wall and everything. Uh, there's a guy over there that he's not saved. I wish he would get saved. But all he does is he doesn't talk, doesn't give his two cents. He just has a camera and he walks all around Jerusalem. He walks all around um, Israel, all the major cities, the, the city of David. Okay, all these things. Uh, and I just love watching that, and I talk to the Lord about the Jews. How are the Jews doing? Once that, are they, they're getting close with that temple. There's times I look on to see about the third temple, um, and I pray for them every once in a while. I always throw that in there because it's important to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But the, what we're really praying for, that true peace, is going to be Jesus Christ. The only time Jerusalem's going to know true peace is when Jesus Christ comes back to rule and reign for a thousand years. But we pray, Brother Sister Christ, today is that they might be saved. Okay. Before the time of Jacob's trouble starts. Okay. So, um, I did a video clip, which I'll put in here in a second. You get to see Victoria. You get to see some of the projects I've been doing around here. And once again, an update on the thank you for Other Sis Christ for your prayer request for the wood stove. And we'll get into that. But um, just these are the big prayer requests that you follow these, get these scriptures in your heart, and you're living them. But the big prayer request always today is that the brethren today desperately need prayer. Okay? The world's falling apart. The world's always falling apart. The world's always going contrary to this book right here, to God's word, to doing God, things God's way. It's always contrary. And what Satan's trying to do is trying to get our eyes off Jesus Christ and get it on the world. And if you can get your eyes off Jesus Christ, oh, we don't have to look for that blessed hope. Eh, he's not coming back for another seven years. We don't have to look for that blessed hope and get your eyes on the world, he can get you really messed up. I speak from experience. Anytime I take my eyes, get, 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 fall, into, fall into temptation and choose to take my eyes off of this, but I get tempted and I take my eyes off of it and look at the world, my walk with the Lord suffers. The ministry, if you're a man in ministry, your ministry is gonna suffer big time if you're taking your eyes off this and putting it on the world. But who's the lowercase g God of this world? Satan. Okay, the lowercase g God of this world. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to insert this clip, but but one of the prayer requests is is to keep us from evil, brothers and Christ. It's nothing wrong with you looking saying, hey, this is going on in the world. But one of my prayer requests still has always been that don't get distracted by what's going on in the world. Don't let fear mongering get you to start stop living for the Lord, stop trusting the Lord, start believing in stop believing in His word. Don't let that war, the fear, fear mongers. There's some brethren out there that I believe are saved, but they're getting into fear mongering. I know one brother in Christ, his ministry is all about fear mongering at this point. He's not showing you what's going on in the world and pointing you back to Jesus Christ as a solution to all our problems and to stay focused on living for Jesus Christ. He says, look at what's going on in the world. Are you getting ready? Are you hunkering down? Are you enduring to the end to be saved? I mean, to be caught up. He doesn't have the attitude of pointing you to Jesus Christ and keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ. He's taking your eyes on Jesus. Not that he's purposely doing it, but that's just what he. I feel he's, from the reaction of some of the brethren that and his comments, he's taking you away from the Lord and getting you so distracted by the world. We need to get back to this. We need to get back to living for Jesus Christ. The world's going to go downhill. It's always been going downhill. You talk to uh, Bible-believing, God-fearing men a hundred years ago, they'll say, this world is falling apart. 500 years ago, they'll, they'll look at the world and say, man, it's, a, it's really falling apart. Now, I believe we're in the last days. I do, brother and sister Christ. So we get to see a lot more of what the Bible talks about the last days than the brother and sister in Christ did 500 years ago. But brethren have always been looking at this world saying, this world's falling apart, and it is. It's going away from this. Right. Stay on the straight and narrow. So I'm going to go ahead and add this clip. And then we'll be back here in just a second. Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Just want to do a prayer update. 
the wood stove has been put in. I was able to find this little V rack really cheap, and I got a cheap bucket. It's got a, uh, you know, the shovel and the broom, and it's for the the wood stove. Oh, sorry about that. We'll talk about them in a second. But uh, it's really nice. Lord finally got it to me. We had to test run it once. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. But this is my first wood stove, so we'll find out. It's got two. Oops, sorry about that. It's got two connections. This connection here that controls airflow, and this connection here that controls airflow. And, and it makes makes a way up there. We'll show the top of it. I like how they put something on the top. I was able to find two of these really cheap. Uh, what this does, for some people who don't know about wood stoves, when you put this on a hot wood stove, and I need to dust. Boy, is that dusty. Uh, wood stove, all the stuff comes off during the winter, except for those fans. And those fans will start turning based off the heat. And they'll help blow the heat around the house. So the Lord blessed me finally. It was one of my prayer requests, brother and sister Christ, for this wood stove. Was to get the wood stove. And right now I've been taking care of a lot of wood, trying to get wood together. Um, these three guys, remember last month, if you haven't watched the prayer request from last month or one of those update videos I did, um, I had to deal with mites in the um, chicken coop. And I lost two chickens. And one chicken was a setter, and what that means is, is they will sit on the eggs all day. And they rarely come out. They'll come out to get a little bit of food. They'll come out to get a little bit of water. And then they go right back into the nesting and start nesting. So I put the three eggs in the incubator. Didn't think they were going to hatch. I didn't know if I got to them in time because they got to stay warm in order to hatch. And by God's grace, they hatched and they gave me these three. And right now they're in the what I call the ugly stage. When they're first hatch and they're fuzzy, they're beautiful, fuzzy. But now their feathers are growing in. So now they look all kind of, you know, like everything's kind of dirty. That's just because the feathers are coming in and the fuzzy parts are disappearing. And you can still see a little fuzz on them. But I got their food, their little walking stick, and I got their water right here. So this is where I put them up, right next to the fireplace. So that's why they're here and they're making noise and they're seeing me uh, hand feeding them. But the prayer request for the wood stove right here was amazing. We're going to walk outside real quick. So we'll walk outside real quick. I apologize if it's jumping a lot but we're gonna walk outside there's victoria she's doing good she's jumping around having a lot of energy bringing out her toys everywhere but i'm stacking all this wood up and here's some this what little bits that's left over i didn't really want to put wood here but i have a lot of food, wood left over got neighbors that are giving me trees that are falling down and i had to buy some uh, a cord of wood initially that i could use today there's our pond where we did the pond uh, Bible by the pond. I had to move the pond over here. Was originally out there where the sun is, but today uh, is a very beautiful day. I can see the ocean, just a little piece of it. Uh, since I know where the lighthouse is, you can barely see the lighthouse, and there's a huge rock out there that you can barely see. But today is is a very good sunny day. And you say, well, why is that a big deal? We're up here. We've been having a lot of fog, a lot of cloud cover. It hasn't been getting that hot. Which could be a blessing, but the garden hasn't been doing that well this year. Believe it or not, gardens need sun. But I had to set this up. My uncle, who's also a brother in Christ, gave me that shed. I I got this set up for water, to start watering things out front. But I was able to get this really cheap. And it's uh, Velcro. And... I was able to stack all the wood on this. So this wood's completely stacked. This is where I'll be drawn from come winter time. I'll fix that later. But that's what this is when you ask, well, what's this big thing right here? It's a stack of wood. And I'm trying to set up some starter wood. I, I learned that you had to do some starter wood to uh, help start the fire. Once the fire gets going, then you just put logs on top of the hot coals that the fire's already going. Okay. Uh, I got this for splitting the wood. Uh, if the wood pieces are too big, then I have to split them to make them smaller. So we're out here, and that's what I've been doing a lot, trying to get this, uh, get ready for winter time. So the guy that delivered the first cord of wood gave me that axe. 
And then I was blessed with finding that axe because it's got a flat end on one side and I use it for splitting. And I use chainsaws and hand saws to cut the trees down. So this is a good example. Is This is the wood that I bought. And this is the type of wood that I've been cutting up. One of the trees that fell down around here. And so I just wanted to do an update. Uh, I was blessed. Let's see if we can get this. I was blessed. With being able to fill this up with wood praise the lord and it goes back a ways so there's different rows different rows i could probably still fit i might come in here and fit some more up here and fill it in a little bit but we want it to breathe it's got a vent i don't know i can't see it because the wood piece is right there but it's got vents in there so it lets it breathe which is a good thing uh, so i wanted to thank the brethren Make sure we lock everything. I want to thank the brethren for their prayers for the wood stove, pellet stove. If you don't remember, recap, my pellet stove broke down on me and we go without power sometimes up here. We get big, huge wind storms. And when you get big, huge wind storms, um, it, it, we have trees that, that will slowly die and they'll stay standing up. And if they die from the top to the bottom, the root structure is kind of strong and the tree will stay standing, and when wind blows, it'll break part of the tree off, and it'll fall against the power lines and stuff that's on the main road, the main highway road, uh, Carpenterville Road, and we'll lose power for five days. Sometimes the root system, if it starts dying from the root system, you'll see it loses its green a lot from the top. At the top, it'll be top-heavy. See, when it dies from the top to the bottom, the top starts drying out, and the tree's not as heavy. So that's why you see trees that are dead that'll stay standing for a long time, even though they're dead. But when you have a tree like the tree I'm cutting down right now, this tree right here, if you look at it, the wood itself looks heavy. It looks good. It looks like the tree was alive when I cut it down. But what happened was is the root system of the tree started dying, half of it, and the tree didn't have the strength and it fell down. And it'll fall against power lines too. So... Um, <laughs> they're yelling at me because they want treats i didn't bring them any treats what's going on but brother sister christ uh prayer request all right i'm gonna go do a standing talk about the prayer request in more detail but i wanted to do this little walk through to thank the brethren for uh for their prayer uh, about the wood stove and it was a big update on the wood stove the chickens the chicken coop update on the chicken coop chicken coop is doing great I uh, got it. Mites infest is gone. The chickens seem to be doing way better. Uh, still getting a lot of good eggs. <laughs> but the sad thing is, is I uh, those four babies, those are four right there. You can see them right there. The closest ones to us. Those are from my last time of hatching eggs. And I got four of them to hatch out of six. And I think two to three of my roosters, which means once they get big enough, and this is the guy that's making the noise. Once they get big enough, I'll have to eat them because I, don't... <laughs> I only want one rooster. And that guy back there is my rooster. The, the white and the black uh, tail feathers. And he's really good roosters, so I don't need a lot, a lot of roosters. So that's the, that's the hard thing when you try to incubate them yourself, trying to get roost, uh, hens versus roosters. And you can tell he's young by how he grows. He's a very young guy. So the chicken coop's doing great. The garden, I'm not going to walk back there. I did it last time, but the garden's doing great. I'm getting some good food from it. But we're going to switch to the deck so I can stand and talk to you guys about some prayer requests um, and uh, what we should be praying for. Uh, so I'll see you there. So once again, Brother Says Christ, thank you, thank you, thank you for praying. The Lord helped me make it happen. Um, there's still a lot more work to do, some more tree woods cutting down. There's still some work on the property I'm trying to get done before winter time sets in. We haven't had much of a summer this year. Um, not over here on the coast, we haven't. So, Brother Says Christ, we just need to be praying for the brethren. Pray that we don't get distracted. Okay. Pray for patience. Prayer request for me has always been patience. Um, I 
But brothers and sisters of Christ, the number one prayer still, I know last month the number one prayer request was just to pray for the brethren, but it still seems like that's the, fi the, the wood stove. Thank you for the prayer for that. But a lot of brethren pray for me for my um, garden, for the chicken coop, and now the wood stove and everything, and uh, praying for my health, my knees, going for walks, my lower back. Uh, but mainly my knees seem to have a hard time. Like they want to give out and I can't really lift much. I knew that my seizure disorder um, had a heat stroke in Okinawa. <clears throat> and uh, after that heat stroke, I had uh, three to four seizures a month for almost 10 years. Um, it took 10 years for through, the, through pharmaceutical drugs to get the seizures out, but there was a lot of other different side effects. And then the Lord helped me slowly start eating right and doing right and getting to the point where I didn't have to and healing me uh, to where I could use alternative ways of trying to deal with it and got off the pharmaceutical drugs. But all those seizures did damage on my body, brother says Christ. So I pray for the health, physical health of the brethren. I know other brethren out there have testimonies of how they struggle. They praise God. We're supposed to praise God in all things, brothers Christ. That's the hardest thing. My knees are hurting. My knees are falling apart. I praise God that I can still walk. I praise God that I'm still here. See, I couldn't walk. I was in a wheelchair. I praise God that I can still read His Word. There's things to praise God for. Always things to praise God for. Um, make sure we're praising God for things and thanking God for all things. Uh, just We just need to pray for some of the brethren that are going through some physical hardship. So that's a prayer request for the brethren as a whole. But I like to thank the brethren for their prayer for me. And It just seems like lately I've got to take, it's like every other day. If I do a hard day of woodworking, the next day I'm sitting out here just not able to walk or, or move. Uh, but like I said, the seizure disorder, they, it messed up my muscles all over. And I knew when I got older it would catch up to me someday. So I've been trying to work through it and power through it. But I need prayer, brother says Christ. Um, so please pray for me as I'm praying for you guys. I didn't mean for this study to go so long, so brothers and sisters Christ, prayer is essential. I didn't mean to get into a lecture on the verses, just we read those verses all the time and it's so important. That's why. We need to hide them here and live them. Memorize them, hide them in our hearts, and live them. Make sure you're praying. Make sure you're praying for the brethren every day. Make sure you're praying for Israel every day that they might be saved. Okay, make sure you're praying that God will open the scriptures to you. You're staying in the scriptures every day, but you're praying that, Lord, please open the scriptures to me. Show me something. Help me understand the word, your words, Lord. Help me to hide them in my heart and live them. Help me to share them with others if God calls you to share them with others, what God has shown you. Okay. So we're going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching and keep praying, brother, sister Christ.